Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing with our summer scouting, landing on a team that we talked a lot about in 2022, had a lot of arguments in 2022. Dill, the Illini fans got on you in a big way. But we are discussing it. Illinois heading into 2023. Brett Vilma doing a phenomenal job with this program. I think everyone knows it's trending in the right direction. When you look at the Big Ten West, it's up for grabs, and Illinois is certainly a team that you could see playing for a Big Ten championship game. Now, before we get into it again, just want to say shout out to the Illinois fans. You guys were absolutely awesome in 2022. We talked a lot of Illinois. You guys were on my brother, and that's quite frankly what college football is about, like the passion, like the, the discussion in the comment section. So we appreciate you guys in a big way. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and Dill before we get into this preview which is there anything you'd like to say to the Illinois fans yeah I mean you can count me as a hater from last year I thought they'd be uh bottom of the Big Ten West Conference and I mean they're not this team is playing the Brett Bielma style that I I think he wanted to they bullying teams around beating people up up front on both lines of scrimmage had a, a good crop of athletic guys on both sides and the cornerbacks in safeties and then at the wideout spots, the, this team is going in the right direction. Again, like Brett Bielma came in, he said the offensive linemen were terrible that he inherited. <laughs> He's built that back up into being one of the better units in the conference. And I mean, they, they, there were really some play. growing pains with Brett Bielma taking over this program. But as you had like what you saw in 2022 and as you head into 2023, this is exactly what you thought a Brett Bielma program would look like. Dill, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. We got a new quarterback taking over. Tommy DeVito, solid. Like, they completed almost 70% of his passes, did not turn the ball over much, could extend plays when he needed to. They didn't ask him to do much. And that Barry Looney offense, it, it's easy for quarterbacks. You want to establish the run, some kind of quick throws outside to the receivers. Luke Altmeyer coming in, I think he has a little bit of a higher ceiling to – maybe add some explosiveness to this offense that there just really wasn't there in 2022. And and that's kind of where I, I, I kind of would go is I, again, DeVito is not a bad quarterback, but if anyone was holding that team back, it was the lack of ability to make a ton of plays in the pass game. And, and that, and, and again, I think the wideouts are there. You get a guy like Luke Altmaier, we're highly recruited out of high school. Obviously you haven't really seen anything from him in college, but Again, if they can just take a step forward in that passing attack and be a little more dynamic than what they were, I, that's, to me, the recipe for this team to take that jump into being like undoubtedly the best team in that conference, and I think they're right there. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you'll see just the explosive air, like passing attack that you see from other programs, maybe on the Pac-12 or the, in the SEC. That's just not how Illinois wants to run this offense. That being said, I, I do think Luke Altmaier offers a little bit more from an arm talent standpoint. So when you do want to push the ball down the field a little bit, I do think Luke Altmaier is certainly capable. And you noted it. One, highly recruited out of high school, top 200 prospect nationally, one of the most talented quarterbacks we've seen wear an Illinois uniform in a very long time. And 12 months ago, he was battling Jackson Dart for that quarterback one role at Ole Miss. And fast forward to now, Jackson Dart getting some buzz to be a first-round NFL draft pick. Luke Altmaier took that competition into the season. So I think he is a guy that you feel confident about taking over from Tommy DeVito and, and where this Illinois offense can go. The, the you one. don't you don't need to be a team that throws it all around. No. But again, it's like, you talk about it as Michigan fans. Like you want to see a little yes. more. You want to see them hit those big plays because yep. teams do need to sell out to stop the run against a team like Illinois. And you got to be able to punish them more consistently than – what they did because at the end of the day DeVito for for what he did right they did not hit much down the field they kept pretty much all most of his throws inside of 15 yards yeah I think you just want to open that up because again in my opinion they have the receiving talent to do it that that's what makes me want to see it more yeah I'm actually we'll we'll get to this this pass catcher unit but I I do want to talk about the the one real not I wouldn't even call it an issue but you're you're gonna miss Chase Brown in a big way he was one of the best running backs in the country for the last couple years one of the reasons why I was such a big fan of this Illinois team heading into 2022, you got a couple of guys that you feel good about. Josh McCray was someone that I was really excited to spell Chase Brown last year. And, and he ended up getting hurt and Chase Brown kind of had to be the bell cow. Josh McCray getting healthy, I, I think, kind of fits what this offense wants to do. Like you want to be a power run offense. You want to go heavy. 
Josh McCray is a legitimate bowling ball with the football. If he gets healthy, I don't think he ever really got fully back healthy during that 2022 campaign. If he gets healthy, I love him taking 15, 20 carries a game because he's not a guy you want to tackle that many times. And then Reggie Love, another uh, another serviceable back. I think the run game will be okay. I don't think you're going to have a running back in the room that's as good as Chase Brown, but behind this offensive line, I think you can still run the football very, very effectively. And that's one thing I think a lot of teams, like you, know, you lose a top running back, and especially a guy in Chase Brown who ultimately he just took a lot of the carries. Like We didn't even get to see a ton of McCray and Love because – Chase Brown was on the field so yeah. much, and, and he had to be like almost too much at times. Yeah, yeah, and, and but like these teams, like I, I think I think those two are good, and at the end of the day, I don't think the identity changes. I I don't think the running game is going to sink as much as people think, and, and I guess a comp would be Michigan State, but Michigan State was like Kenneth Walker was everything for them, and then they didn't return an offensive line that was any good. It's like that that's was the, that was the big thing. This yeah, that was the big thing. Why load this line, and they're gonna be great, I think. Yeah, this this offensive line. That's kind of why I'm so excited for this running attack. Yeah, I, I think you got two good backs in Josh McCray, Reggie Love, but when you return a guy like Julian Pearl, Isaiah Adams, Zai Chrysler, those guys are exactly what Brett Bielma wanted. Two of them, I believe, from the JUCO ranks, heavy dudes that can move some bodies, and whoever's running the football behind this offensive line is gonna have some room to work with. Yeah, and, and that so that's kind of my. Like you could worry about losing Chase Brown, but again, you have this type of offensive line. Julian Pearl, I think, is going to be a first round pick. I think people are way too. Again, I don't know that Illinois guys get the credit they deserve. Like, there, this guy can really play. I think he is a little bit more of a dynamic athlete than people think when they think of what this Illinois attack or rushing attack was. But again, I, I, I think this unit is loaded. I think they're returning three of their better guys, and and I. At this point, I trust Bielma to roll in other guys and, and make it work because that's what he's been doing for forever at, in, at college. Yeah, basketball. and at the pass catcher group, I, I've been a huge fan of this. I think it's one of the more underrated wide receiver and pass catcher rooms in the country. I think a guy like Isaiah Williams is Kadarius Tony level athleticism with the ball in his hands, and he struggled with some drops, but you saw Barry Looney in that offensive staff say we got to just get the ball to this kid in space because he's one of the more special athletes in the entire country when he has the ball in space. A guy like Pat Bryan, I think, compliments to someone like Isaiah Williams really well. And Casey Washington transferred the Wake Forest for a couple months back at Illinois. He's another very capable wide receiver. I think this th passing game kind of goes through Isaiah Williams as the playmaker. But you got some supplementary pass catchers in Keep an eye on a guy in Malik Elzey coming out as a true freshman, one of the highest recruits Illinois has ever landed. Another guy that has the body and the athleticism to be an impact player year one for this Illinois team. Man, that's the thing. You compliment what Isaiah Will Williams does in terms of his dynamicness and, and the ability to make plays with ball in the pitch with bigger guys who, again, I, that's kind of why I want to see them open up a little bit more because I do think those two, Brian and, and Casey Washington, should be able to – get downfield a little more and make those plays that again are it, it's easier to move the ball with one 30 yard play than it is six five yard plays that's just like yeah we, we talk about that metric so much the explosiveness for offenses you don't want to necessarily go and that, that is kind of illinois game is kind of grind you down but it's a lot easier to go six plays 75 yards in a touchdown versus 16 plays 80 yards in a touchdown and you want to see illinois be able to get those chunk plays hit those explosive plays at, at a little bit more of a routine basis. Dill, switching over to the defense, you lose a lot of production, right? Like, especially when you look at the secondary, Jatavius Martin, Sidney Brown, Devin Witherspoon, all guys that are going to have successful NFL careers. You lose your defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters, who bef even before the year, we're saying, like, Illinois better just take advantage of while they have him because he's going to be a head coach sooner rather than later, and he obviously goes to Purdue. Man, that front seven, though, it's one of the best in the country. And that's the thing. You just think when Illinois, they just beat people up. And that's like, again, what they do on both sides of the ball. But that front seven, big physical players are led by Randolph and, and Newton. They're just a problem. It's like, even for like a team like Michigan, I was like, oh, coming into that game, I was like, oh, Michigan's offensive line, this, that. Like, I know Corum was out for part of that game, but even regardless, they just, they were beating Michigan's O line up. It, it was, very formidable group, and I think that does help that secondary because 
it lets them play free. They, that, that front six, front seven pretty much eats up run games, and they were doing that all year. Yeah, and I, I, th- you ask me to name some better front sevens than than, than Illinois, it's going to be hard to do. Like Jazan Newton probably would have been a top fifty pick in the NFL draft had he declared. Keith Randolph probably would have been a day two pick had he declared. There's a lot of talent, and we talk about this a lot, just like we talk about the explosive metric on the offensive side of the ball. The negative play and havoc metric for the defensive side of the ball is massive, and you're not going to find a team that gets behind the line of scrimmage creates havoc in pockets better than Illinois. And, and led you know by who those I think guys you got to watch out for is, is Gabe Jockas. I think as a Gabe, true freshman, Gabe. he looked awesome. In a, I, I, that's maybe the – they didn't play as good of on the edge, I thought, for most of the season. But as yeah, he got yeah. going, I think Seth Coleman was solid. But if Jockas takes a step and becomes like that guy, which it looked like he could be, I don't even know what you do against this team because if, if they can get pressure you were on that, seeing, that, I was I was, I was reading some uh, I was reading some Whitney Marcellus comps for for uh, for Gabe, which which would be really interesting because I am with you. A lot of their production, a lot of their havoc came from the inside, from guys like Newton and Randolph. If you can kind of supplement that with a guy like Gabe coming off the edge and being a true force on the outside, very special front seven. And I, in the in the secondary, Tavion Nicholson probably going to try to take on that lockdown cornerback role, but that's probably where your concerns are. They go to this, they go to the portal, land some guys uh, in the safety spot, but we talk about this a lot. What's the easiest way to take a a little pressure off your secondary. If you have some inexperienced guys, it's a ferocious pass rush. And that's exactly what Illinois has. Yeah. And that's just, that's going to be the heart and soul of that team. I think is that front seven and the defense, I think. And you just look at the linebackers, obviously they're losing a little bit. But I think Tariq Barnes is ready to step in. He, I thought he had a really good year last year. And that, to me, I, again, I think this people are probably going to be worried about the secondary. But I honestly thought I think they have some guys who are ready to play. I think I think Matthew Nichols or Matthew Bailey, sorry, is one of the better safeties in the conference. I thought in terms of making plays across the field, he plays the run really well. He's just like that prototypical guy or free safety role who, who just makes a lot of plays. So I think they have the guys to do it. And again, yeah, you're losing a lot, but it's that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like that, that doesn't mean the guys behind him are, are bad players by any means. Yeah. Taking a look at the schedule, we'll, we'll kind of go, th- you look back at what the eight and five season they put together, eight and four in the regular season. So you look at some of the like, – probably should have beaten Michigan State. I think they almost doubled them up in yardage, just couldn't really finish drives. Purdue, they got – I thought that was a very poorly ref game. A lot of pass interferences that just Devin Witherspoon normally gets away with. It, that team could have easily been 10-2. Like, that's how good I think that team was. They lost some games down the stretch that were just kind of close and, and kind of luck of the draw. They're taking a look at the schedule this year. I really like how, how it shapes up. You get Penn State at home – in the first three weeks of the season, Drew Lar kind of being a newer quarterback to college football, like I think that's a massive trap game for Penn State. And that's the thing. If they can get after him and be super disruptive, which I think they should be able to, that could make it hard on Drew Lar. Because, again, you're right. You did see when he came in against Purdue, and that game was getting a little hectic for them. Obviously, you don't want to start the year with that type of loss. It I mean, he didn't look wildly comfortable. If they can just keep him uncomfortable and, no. and play the way they need to play, it's. I'm not saying they should be like favorites against Penn State. That's going to be a really hard game. Penn State is really good. But I don't think there's a lot of games that you look at Illinois now and say they can't win just because when you can play that good up front, you can put a lot of pressure on anyone, make it hard. To yeah, win. and even the game on the road going to Lawrence, Kansas, perfect matchup. Like, that's on paper. Like, Kansas is a kind of an up-and-coming up team in the Big 12, a tough out-of-conference game. Perfect matchup. Like, what does Kansas struggle with? It struggles with their front seven stopping the run. I have a very hard time seeing Kansas deal with the physicality on both sides of the football that Illinois is going to bring to the table. And if you are 2-0 and with the win on the road at Kansas, maybe kind of squeaking into that top 25, I could see that being an absolutely electric game. FAU probably should take care of going and facing your former defensive coordinator on the road at Purdue. I think that's a very winnable road game. You get Nebraska at home. You go on the road to Maryland. Dill. This is where it gets interesting. And you're probably looking at this game on the road at Iowa, on the road at Minnesota. 
you got to – if you can win both those games, it, it to me it seems like Illinois is probably playing for a Big Ten championship game come the end of November. I think they should be the favorite to win that side of the conference. Yeah. You know, with Wisconsin and Nebraska kind of overturning what, what they do, I think Illinois has got a very established culture – that again, I, they were the best team in the conference by far. I thought last year. I don't know. Again, that Purdue game was. You're right. It, there's no way they should have actually lost that. It just was. Again, I don't know, poorly officiated. I, they shouldn't have lost to Michigan State. That's what I'm blaming it on. They, it, it, they were the best team in that side of the conference. They were the team you, I think, as Michigan fans or Ohio State fans, you didn't want to see in that championship game. And I think this year it should be kind of. I mean, I, I just think Bielma's got it rolling, and these other teams really don't. Minnesota, again, hey, they're good. I think P.J. Yeah, that's, that's good, he's not taking the program much higher. I think you nailed it. Like, a lot of these programs in the Big Ten West, outside of Iowa, are replacing their high coaches in, in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Purdue. And so you look at teams that are just kind of have some – steady culture it's seemingly just illinois minnesota even iowa is kind of a new quarterback a lot of new transfers coming in illinois is one of those teams that you're kind of like hey hopefully they can pick up right where they left off in 2022 and again wouldn't be a surprise if this team is playing for a big 10 championship at the end of the year this is one of our favorite teams to talk about again appreciate the support you guys are showing especially the illini fans so if you do enjoy the content consider subscribing to the channel and we'll talk to y'all later